Hey, what's going on everybody? Matt with Lathrop Media. We're inside Inventor Pro 2019 and we're going to be talking about decals. Now, I do want to preface this with saying, one, if you're thinking about, you know, trying to use this data for any kind of CNC work or, you know, laser engraving or laser ablating or 3D printing or whatever you want to call it, or I should say, whatever you want to try and use, Decals are not going to be the way that you want to go. You're going to either have to emboss or extrude those, uh, you know, features, whatever they are. Uh, but essentially what I'm going to try and relay is decals for a majority usage. Uh, what I mean by that is if you just need a visual representation or a facsimile of the end result, and you don't want your, you know, system resources to be consumed by features you don't need. Because after all, keep in mind, if you're extruding or embossing, you know, text or features or what have you, it's going to consume more system resources. Uh, and that kind of piles up if you're talking about doing like, you know, if you're naming plates or parts or anything like that, and you're doing it across several pieces and you're putting those into sub-assemblies that go into assemblies, it adds up quick. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Let's get started. And uh, first thing you have to do here is have an image that you're going to be using as a decal. Uh, so come up here to your 2D sketch. Go ahead and click on the face of your part where you want that decal to be. We're going to come up here to insert image on the ribbon bar. And then we're going to find that image. And I'm just going to use a plain chain JPEG here. Um, I will say for the sake of argument, I've tried to get this uh, to be, I don't know, it actually should be. I made this in Photoshop with the dimensions in mind of my end result, so I didn't really have to worry about scaling. Uh, so I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to worry about it, but either way. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by saying that we want uh, this edge to be in line with this edge and this edge to be in line with this edge. And as you see right there, if I, it still says two dimensions are needed. Um, and, and I can go through and say that this edge and this edge, this edge and this edge, um, if you, what am I missing here? It says I need one more dimension, but I don't understand where it's needed. Ah, okay. That's what parallel with that. There we go. Now we're fully constrained. Forgot about rotation. So now that we have our JPEG down here, go ahead, hit finish sketch. And as you can see, I mean, we're on top of our plate. It's nothing special, but we have some overlapping over the holes, over the fillets that we have on our corners. So that's where the decal comes into play. So we have our sketch come up here to decal click on the image, and then we'll click on the face. Now, if I were to hit OK, it does everything for me. Now, there is chain edges you really don't have to worry about unless it's like a curvy surface. Um, well, I'll try and explain that in a second. And then wrap to face as if you're dealing with something that's cylindrical. We'll also cut that in as well. But for the sake of argument here with this, I'm just going to hit OK. As you could see, automatically kind of gets rid of the image over top of the holes and also over top of our fillets. And it looks essentially the way it needs to be. Now, like I said with this, it has absolutely no geometric information or geometric data whatsoever. It is nothing more than a little sticker that's thrown over top of your part. This, uh, it, it's great for visualization, but that's all that it's for. Something that I also want to bring up is, you know, if you need information to be relayed in your drawing, you can't exactly do that with a decal either. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new drawing. I'm going to punch OKs here. Oh, I don't want to save it. Dad nab it. Bear with me for a second. So as you can see here, if I go to drop this into our drawing, it basically gets rid of our decal because like I said, it has no geometrical data whatsoever. Uh, the only way you're gonna be able to see a decal inside of drawing is if you double click on it or while you're placing it, you actually come down here to our shaded view, click on that, 
click OK, now it'll show up. Uh, it's something to keep in mind. It all comes down to what you're wanting to use it for, um, what you're trying to relay, so on and so forth. Now, like I said, uh, you have the wrap the face for decals going across a cylindrical object. So think of it like as a soda pop can or a pop can if you're from where I am. Um, just have to do a little bit to it. Not too much, but go ahead and do our sketch. We'll place our image. I'm not going to worry about dimensioning anything because I'm just literally wanting to show you what it looks like when you're wrapping. So go ahead and hit decal. We're going to click our image and then we're going to click the face of our object. Now, as you can see, I have wrap the face deselected. I'm just going to hit OK. And you can see it's trying to stretch and warp our decal. And that's definitely not what we want. Uh, but if you just wanted it to to wrap around that surface, edit feature, wrap to face, hit OK. No more distortion. Uh, the entire label is being used, or decal, I should say. Now, as for your chain faces, uh, basically we have, you know, kind of a step down here, but we have, you know, fillets transitioning from, you know, the top step to the bottom step. So for the sake of argument here, we're going to start with the top. Go ahead and throw our image on it. Hit OK. Hit finish. Now if I go through and do decal, take off the chain faces, click our image, click our face, hit OK. It's only going it's going to stop at this break where the face meets our fillet. So if I come back up here, edit feature, chain faces, now you can see that it kind of goes beyond that. You know, it goes down connects this face to this fillet to this fillet to this face. It's chaining those together. Now this is obviously an extreme example because of how it's set up. It, there's going to be distortion and whatnot, but I just wanted to cover what the wrap the face and the chain faces options were. But that's about all I have for this video. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. And until the next video, you know, you guys take it easy, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you guys later.